Hey there YouTube, this is SGM 406 back with another video. I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at this guy. Uh, so my newest project is I'm actually making a battery bank and I opted to use one of the pre like pre-available modules and I'm going to use it for like the power components and whatnot, but there's an onboard like LED indicator that shows a percentage. So I'm actually going to gut that part and add my own controller so I can have extended information and I can have this really nice um, alphanumeric LED display that you can see here. And this guy is an, let's see, SCD um, 5583A, which is the green model. This um, display also comes in red, high efficiency, red, orange, uh, green, which this is a green one, and high efficiency green. So there's a number of them available. It's only a 5x5, five five, so you can't do a full dot matrix like a 5x7 alphanumeric font. Uh, so some of the characters look a little funky. I, I grabbed the characters from the data sheet and I stored them as a like a look, constant lookup table uh, for my controller. So that's not the main point of this video. The point is actually I have an interesting... Um, sort of real-world application problem that I need to solve for this. And I've already solved it, obviously, but I'm going to show you guys how I solved it, which hopefully is interesting. Anyway, so I want to measure the battery, and a lithium battery ranges from about 3 volts to 4.2, and it's non-linear, however, so the battery curve actually kind of looks like this, where there's a sharp knee. So when it's fully charged, it'll quickly drop a little bit. This is exaggerated, obviously. And it'll kind of settle to a, a flat plateau. And most of the capacity of the battery is in this plateau. However, once it gets below like 30 or 40 percent, the voltage drops very quickly. So it's really difficult. You can approximate this just by a straight line. Uh, but that doesn't give you a very accurate um, battery voltage, both at the start of you know your your higher voltages as well as your lower voltages. It's only really accurate in the middle, uh, which is not very great for determining battery life. So what I ended up doing was I went online and I googled um, like battery voltage percentage chart or something like that, and I found a page. I'll link it down below, and it basically gave me all these values of what percent equates to what voltage, basically. And this is kind of, I think it's it's a little subjective, um, but this seemed to kind of gel with what I know about uh, lithium voltages and um, roughly how much power is stored at a certain voltage, et cetera, et cetera. So what I have now is this piecewise function that approximate the original curve. So I can take this and for any given uh, voltage within kind of these linear segments, I can calculate the exact percentage, um, well, relatively speaking. So I only have within 5% increments. Um, and you can actually implement this very easily. I have a function to do that where you just um, round, basically. So it'll only give you the percentage in terms of 5% increments. So that's good enough, probably, honestly, and I've implemented a function to do that. However, I wasn't happy. I wanted, like, down to the the 1%, you know, accuracy, <laughs> because, of course, there's a lot going on with the noise in the circuit and the ADC. There's noise as well, so I, I just wanted to see, you know, percentages other than 5% increments. So anyway, just to, to get into that... Um, what we're doing is a, a piecewise linear function. Um, we're trying to convert that into something that our code can understand and execute. And so each of these ranges in between, say, 95 and 100 percent or 0 and 5 percent, we had to actually solve for the line. And so the equation everyone learns in, in you know, in algebra in middle school, I think, or something, uh, is y equals mx plus b. So we're actually solving for both M and B for all of these, these subranges so that we can find each of the line segments, the approximations. So this is basically a rough sketch of what's happening. We have two points, we have a percentage, and we have a voltage. Voltage is on the x-axis, percentage is on the y-axis. So we're just solving for M. It'll basically be the change in percentage, which is, as I said, 5% divided by the change in the voltage. And B, likewise, 
is if you just solve this equation for B, it's um, you just pick either endpoint, one of the percentages minus M, which we previously solved for, uh, times one of the appropriate uh, voltages as well. So you have to pick one either. If we're trying to solve the line segment between 95 and 100, you either pick 100 and uh, 4.2 volts, or you pick 95 and 4.15 volts, and you solve for B, and both values will give you the same value of B because it's a linear line segment. So anyway, what I ended up doing, <laughs> that was pretty long-winded, is uh, coding this uh, monstrosity and how I actually implement it. So this was the old code. It's just a bunch of compare statements, um, and this will only be accurate. It only returns in 5% increments, obviously. Uh, so that was just a proof of concept to me. Uh, this is actually what I ended up doing to get it more accurate, is um, I programmed them as arrays, M and B, and I, I calculated it um, using you know, my graphing calculator. I just wrote a little simple script to spit out the values if I enter X values, it'll just spit out a Y value. So I solve for all these um, values here. I they're they're hard coded as constants because they don't need to change. And then my code here just determines which, in which of those ranges it's in, and it calcu and it sets a a temp value, which is actually the index uh, to, oops, which is actually an index to these arrays. So if it's less than three point um, two seven there. Just scroll this over. Uh, that'll actually be within the zero and five percent range. So actually, I want to choose the last element. So that's why temp gets set to twenty because it's index twenty. However, once you go up, say it's uh, pretty much full, you get a uh, four point two volts. It'll set temp equal to zero, and that corresponds with the ninety-five to hundred percent range, which are is the zeroth element. Of the array so that allows me then to just plug in that equation um, I'm solving for y so y equals m times v which is our x in this case plus b and the temp value um, selects which index to look at depending on what range it calculated it was in up here and it just returns that value I'm actually printing it out over serial as well and here you can see I can just take a little screwdriver and adjust this manually. Okay, I had to restart the serial monitor. It was kind of getting funky there. But yeah, th these are the... Let's see. The actual percentages, and I'm wiggling it right now. I'm using a single turn pot. Probably should have used a multi turn one because it's really hard. The voltage ranges are very small, so it's really hard to accurately change. But here you can see I can decrease it. And it only shows um, one significant figure, or well, two significant figures, only one decimal place on the voltage. But the processor is calculating um, up to three decimal places. You can see there I can smoothly adjust and it drops out at about 3.2 volts, I think it, yeah, about 3.2 there, cut out, so it considers that dead, and fully charged would be a 4.2, which, yeah, right about there, and then it starts dropping shortly after, and that works pretty much exactly in line with what I'm planning on doing, so there's a lot of details here. I'm I can release the code, that's absolutely no problem. This is still a work in progress, so I still have to add um, some functionality for the power bank. I want it to turn on when you press a button and then shut itself off, but I don't want it to draw any quiescent current so that it doesn't drain the battery even when it's off. And so I intended actually to use a sleep uh, mode on the microprocessor, but there's actually a problem. Um, I could use the internal reference and just uh, power the the micro off of the the battery which in this case is four volts but it actually is variable it changes so I could do that but then the problem is actually this screen it needs a steady like it'll turn off if it goes much below like four you know like 4.2 volts something like that it, it gets really dim and it just starts 
spewing, like displaying random corrupted junk. So this actually does need a regulated supply. So if I'm gonna use a regulated supply anyway, I thought I would power the micro off of it because that makes the code simpler for it to calculate the battery voltage because its reference will be tied with the, the regulated five volt supply. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna have it measuring that. Uh, so when you press the button, it'll turn on this transistor, which will turn on the DC-DC converter, which powers the micro. And as soon as the micro boots up, it'll um, pull the, the transistor high using this IO pin. So it'll keep itself on for as long as it needs. And then once it times out after, I don't know, like five or 10 seconds, it'll uh, pull that low and shut itself off basically. And then it, it can only wake up once you press the button again. And I might have um, another input um, tapping off onto this transistor from the, uh, the power bank circuit that I got. And so that when you plug something into charge, it turns itself on and it'll allow the microcontroller to turn on as well. That way it'll monitor the uh, voltage and percentage whilst charging a device or charging itself. So I want to sort of make this a little more intelligent than, you know, power banks that exist, you know, cheap ones. And I wanted to add this really cool screen because I got two of them and that looks really nifty. I need to put um, some sort of um, filter on top to make it a little easier to see though. But yeah, just want to show you guys um, the code that I wrote to do this. Seems like a really simple problem. Uh, and it sort of is, but it sort of gets bogged down in the details uh, of me wanting to get greater accuracy um, in terms of like the percentages. Anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this random video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.